Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth uh, Q&A emails number 61. I was about to say Flat Earth Clues because I do a lot of stuff and I'm losing track and it's Sunday morning, but that's okay. Anyway, this is where you email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. I will do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it, shall we? This one's called, this one has no subject. Hello, Mark. My name is Robbie Olson. I'm pleased to be writing you as a few months back. Your videos were the first I embarked on with my eyes opening to our flat earth truth. Over the New Year's, my wife and I took a flight from Sacramento, California to Detroit, Michigan to meet up with my stepdaughter. Being in Detroit was cold, but importantly, we had visited the Henry Ford Museum twice. It was that interesting. I attached a couple of pictures of the plane that Admiral Byrd had first used to reach Antarctica. I did not know that was up there. I'm sure you have knowledge about all of this, but if you don't have a picture, well, here it is. He attached pictures for me. You know what? I didn't even open up this thing and know that there were pictures. Also, I attached something very interesting about our flight home. The window seat is my favorite and my wife hates it because my attention is on the view <laughs> or flat horizon. Anyhow, the streaks across the window is water and it was fluently, fluently? Streaking across the window as we reached cruising elevation. Well, on the flight video tracker on the small TV back of seat said it was our, said was our altitude, direction, and temperature. Temperature stated negative 43 Celsius which is, by the way, about the same in Fahrenheit. I checked it again, and it was colder. I'm upset that I didn't get the picture of it along uh, the water streaks as I was more intrigued looking for a curve in the horizon. I believe what I read was intentional misdirection as water would be way past freezing. Just a small cliff note you may add to your research. I look forward to more info I come across. As you may know, it's a process to wrap a, mi a mind around something of this magnitude, but I've always considered that the truth has been hidden from us. I always say it's opposite day, and it's interesting to see my wife hanging over my shoulder as I research and begin to question herself. First rule of Flat Club is that you don't speak about Flat Club. Haha. Ha. Classic. <laughs> he actually wrote classic. Thank you for your well put together videos. Look forward to more. Best regards, Robbie Olson. All right. So I will put that in my to do pile because I can have to open it up and look at the pictures, which I haven't yet. I'm sorry about that. Ooh, look, a troll email. This should be fun. I know it's a troll email because the title is called What Have Been Drinking? <laughs> Literally, it's called What Have Been Drinking, not you, uh, from Jameson. Hilarious. Uh, you know, I, sh I should probably add his Actually, his name is Jameson. <laughs> Holy smokes. All right. Anyway, let's get into it. Uh, Mark, I just encountered your video about Flat Earth, and I am like, what the bleep is wrong with these people? Please stop spreading your stupidity to the world, as there are lots of morons who will take your words for real. You, oh, this is this next part's all caps. You are wasting people's valuable time with your stupidity. Uh, now, not caps. Every planet is round due to gravity. Here we go. Just like water drop because becomes round before it falls. If you ever do skydive, you can see. Wow, the grammar here is amazing. You can see with your own eyes the roundness of the Earth from eleven thousand feet up. I saw it with my own eyes, and I traveled the world. Somehow I question that. Don't mix up real info like nine. There it is, like nine nine eleven with disinfo. So pull your head out of your ass and go traveling because I've never traveled. Go out there and open your mind instead of watching too many YouTube videos, dude. I was the one that made the YouTube videos. Please do your research before you spew out your idiotic theory. I am writing this because I can't stand dumb people doing harm to others with <laughs> their stupidity. Sincerely yours, Jameson Moon. Wow. Well, thank you, Jameson. It made my day. I like getting troll emails every once in a while. It lets me know what the opposition is. Remember, you learn more from how people attack than how they defend. That's one of those little... I don't think it's an art of war thing. It's just a standard battle thing. All right. Uh, this one's called Some Random Thoughts. Disclaimer, I don't know what I'm writing here. You may want to read this before reading on your show. This is just some thoughts I have been having that I hope you will find interesting. Okay, I probably won't, I'm not going to read about the graphics, but that's okay. Um, I am still two years behind on Strange World. 
Yeah, but say I'm on episode one thirty something. So yeah, you're you're a couple of years behind. Uh, so I have no idea if you have read my emails on your show. I will get there eventually. Anyway, I am loving the show. I recently saw a video of Venus shot with an Nikon P900. It looked a lot like the moon. I found this very interesting. I did a little digging and found out that, according to astronomers, if a planet is closer to the sun than Earth, it can appear as a crescent, but the others cannot. Uh -huh. It made me think of the Flat Earth map, which shows the land beyond Antarctica, including a second moon and sun. What if Venus is that moon and maybe Mars is that sun? I think I read somewhere that they are older moons and suns that have gradually moved beyond the ice ring over time. If they are artificial lights, uh, it would make sense that the moon and Venus, similar to an LED, would have more longevity and would continue to shine bright. And the sun, Mars, similar to a halogen or incandescent, would fade to red as it matures. Or maybe white light can travel a longer distance without fading where orange light appears red from a distance. I really don't know if there's any scientific facts there in what I just said. It just seems logical to me. Hmm. I was also thinking about how there is a limit to how far we can see across this flat plane of ours before the atmosphere, for want of a less spherical world word distorts the image too much yeah you're absolutely right because remember we are breathing in a soup it is four parts nitrogen to one part oxygen so remember water is two parts hydrogen to one part oxygen so yeah it's a soup you're you're looking through really a thin version of water i don't even know so anyway. uh why do we not see this when looking as far away objects in the sky you know the atmosphere thins the uh, the higher you go but there should be noticeable distortion nonetheless this also applies to photos taken of earth from a high altitude the blue marble should surely show atmosphere and surely some distortion i know they are composites but I question whether or not it would even be possible to photograph the Earth with any clarity if we were able to get far enough from the Earth to take such a shot. Yeah, good question. Um, YouTube. Many of us came to this movement as a result of the YouTube recommendations. It seems odd to me that YouTube recommends flat earth videos to certain people, but not others. Yeah, but it recommends it to a lot. I love YouTube and watch all sorts of stuff on there, but now I only get flat earth recommendations. With YouTube being intrinsically linked to Google and Google having almost godlike powers due to its vast data bank, it occurred to me that maybe its artificial intelligence is helping to release the truth. Google, the AI, does know everything, if you believe in the true AI, which I don't, but I don't want to get into that right now. Countless times it, is, it has known what I am looking for before I have typed the other important words. Its analytical skills are so good. So the people, AI, may know the true shape of the earth. Remember, search algorithms are not the same, search hints are not the same as a true AI, just to let you know. Uh, maybe if you scratch the whole internet, you can find some undeniable proof of the Earth's true shape. The internet is so vast that if there is such a proof, then it can probably be found on the internet somewhere. Eh, not really. And if it is, Google has seen it. Maybe the Google AI is a flat earther and is assisting the movement by recommending videos to those who will receive it well. Because as well as knowing everything the internet knows, it also knows us. I have always assumed Google is evil. Maybe it isn't. Uh, and then... I won't go into much more of that. But thank you. Uh, that's from Nick. Thank you, Nick, for that. Fantastic. This one's called, if it actually opens up, Flat Earth Azimuthal Equidistant Projection Map with Plotted Cities and Distances Using Excel. Hmm. All right, let's try it. Hi, Mark. I've stumbled upon creating a flat earth map based upon the azimuthal equidistant projection map, and it used the latitude and longitude of cities to be placed on it using the Haversin formula. It's pretty neat. I started this because of Lisa Blair and her circumnavigation of the 4550 latitude of the globe in 183 days, 7 hours, 21 minutes, 38 seconds. Wow, the fact you wrote that all is amazing. And I thought I could get the circumference or route traveled by creating a circle of her spots of nav using the North Pole as 0, 0 and the cities as the radius or distance from the North Pole. That may be close to her route. Like Cape Town, I just wanted to find a distance and scaled it to the map of 13,000 mile radius, circling using Excel chart and coordinate graphing. Well, one thing led to another, and I placed the AE map along the coordinate graph. When you place it normally, the zero longitude or prime meridian is at 270, so I rotate it, placing it at zero on the coordinate graph in Excel. You won't believe that it scaled almost perfectly to the distance I set when I figured the distance from North Pole to South Pole. 
Then I just use some math and formulas to plot our cities using Excel. If this is something that you've already come across, cool. If you haven't and know Excel and can use it or want to play with it, let me know and I'll send you the Excel. The problem that I'm running into is the differences in distances when measured by the Haversine formula of that Pythagorean theorem to triangulate distances. I'm investigating the distances of flights between the southern cities. Uh, here is Santiago, Chile and Auckland, New Zealand, of course. Uh, I understand Haversine is using its formula to show distances based upon the globe model, but on my map using Pythagorean theorem is twice as long. I'm guessing that's why the cities are actually placed correctly in Excel for me because I've done the calculations correctly. Here's my thought on how, and he goes into some more mathematical calculations. Huh, interesting. Huh, good stuff. Thanks, Bill. Moving on. This one's called, What Shall We Do Now, My Friend? Sounds like a song lyric. Mark, so, okay, you ask others to join you and want to find the truth, as I will yearn for it. I don't think I've actually had an email with the word yearn in it. Uh, for it and feel it in my soul that we're being deceived. I know beauty, peace, and love exists either elsewhere or on our plane, but only if the veil is lifted. I don't know who you are or how serious you are. Mark Sargent, I'm very serious. But you put an email out there, not just an email, my friend. And these videos are great, but damn it, one day here somebody's has somebody's has have to rise up. I'm reading this as is, folks, and form a coalition coalition to really pursue this thing. My name is Tyler Owens. If you've yet to find someone passionate about truly doing something about this, email me back. I'd be willing to help with funding or forming an organization or even getting a studio built where there could be better videos and information out there. Really? Because we don't have enough really, really, really good videos out there. Whatever I could do, let me know. I believe we're living on an amazing time and we have a huge opportunity to discover the truth of our origins and stop this endless cycle of death. From Tyler o. Owens. Thank you, Tyler. Let me email him back and say, hey, you know, just get involved with a group first and then then see where you are. Because I don't, I don't think he's realized how big this thing is. Or maybe he's only saw, seen Flat Earth Clues. I don't know. Uh, moving on. This one's called Real NASA Conference. How long is this thing? It's not too bad. Uh, my friend, if you would please tend spend ten seven to ten minutes of your busy day buffering email completion time included to watch from the 348 mark with the president asks her what we're learning from nasa being up in space uh, yeah yeah it, it, it's kind of a, a thing on trump which is why hasn't i mean trump has has not mentioned flat earth yet uh and he has really tried to fund um uh fund NASA, but uh, he, he hasn't really gotten into the whole flat earth thing yet. Anyway, moving on. Let's get rid of that one. Meteorites. Oh, boy. Mark, I find your video fascinating, but how do meteorites pierce the firmament and brilliant minds never touch the subject? Ken. I've, I've talked about that since literally week one. I mean, literally one week after I got my clue, the first clue out, people were asking me about meteorites. And I didn't touch them on the clues. And Jonathan from Jersey, my, my former co-host, he was the one that, that jumped on it first. Which is like, oh, it's like throwing rocks into an aquarium, into a fish tank. It's like, yeah, yeah, something like that. Which is all you have to do is, you know, add a piece of metal ore at speed. I don't know, rail gun, shallow trajectory, don't aim at any cities. Again, find me a meteorite that someone has a video that it actually hit the ground somewhere close by. You'd think that we'd get one or two, especially with 7 billion people. Yeah, lots and lots and lots of cell phones out there. Find me a shot where, you know, a meteorite hits the ground. I don't know. It doesn't have to be right next to them. Even, even hundreds of yards away where it hits it, you get that cool blast, you know, crater. Uh, but I do, I do think there's something coming out of this guy. Sure. I just don't ever see him land. And no, I don't think the Tunguska blast of 1908 counts, but that's just me. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Billboard in Macclesfield, England. Hi, Mark. Thank you very much for all your Flat Earth work. This billboard is in Macclesfield, England at the A542, I'm sorry, A523 Silk Road, Tesco Roundabout until the 31st of January. And show you how long it takes me to, to get rid of it. But I did save the picture, and I'm pretty sure I included it in the slideshow. It would be great if you could promote it on your slideshow. Many thanks, Nathalie. Nathalie. 
N A T H A L I E. I don't know how to pronounce it. And the last name Blythe. That's so English. Flat Earth Billboard. Yes, that's cool. Awesome. And I and I did save it somewhere. Pretty sure it's in the slideshow. Uh, this one's called The Very Ground, a Flat Earth song. Somebody sent me a, a song called uh, Keep It Flat, Sharing the Garden. Dot wave, which is cool. I don't I don't have as much time as I used to to make. If you send me just the uh, video, I don't necessarily have the uh, uh, the time to uh, make a. I'm sorry. If you send me the audio, I don't have the time to make the video uh, really anymore. I've, I've, I've between the emails and the shows and the interviews and all this stuff. But but I will listen to it. And if I get a chance, I swear to God, I will try. But do try to make your own videos nowadays if you're going to make a song. It can be as simple or just put it up with a black screen. I mean, seriously, you don't you don't need to to subtitle it or anything. Just put it up there, and uh, and I will I will share it on my channel. This one's called possible Truman Show sequel, please read on air. Okay. Mark, here's the plot for the sequel. Truman realizes the real world is flat after looking at online conspiracies, then sets off an adventure to prove to everyone they are also living inside a domed earth. This is the only way a sequel would work if it's about flat earth. That's brilliant. That's from James. That That is a great premise. And that is uh, a domed structure inside a domed structure. That is great, where all of a sudden it's like, wait, you know, then it turns into a, really like a Twilight Zone episode where he has to venture out and he, you know, he was the, uh, he's still famous, but he doesn't believe that even that world's real. That's great. It's kind of like a 13th floor movie type type of premise. I, I dig it. I don't know if Jim Carrey would be up for it, but it, it, he could still do it. I, I know he could. So. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Song. Another one. Mark, I'm not much of a musician or singer, but here's my Flat Earth Song. And he put on YouTube, and this is from Jeff Barth out of Minnesota, and I'm pretty sure I already, yep, I thumbed it up, and I added it to my Flat Earth Music playlist, yep, and I already commented, it's called Effie Song 3, cool, thank you for that, got a couple hundred views, thank you, this one's called Survival Pack, please, and a question. Uh, hi, Mark. Please, can you send me a copy of your survival pack? And what he means is my survival guide. It's free. It's called Empty Shelves. All you have to do is email me and say, I want your survival guide. It's a couple megs, and I will shoot it off to you in an email. It's just a little PDF file, about 100 pages. Do print it out if you get a chance. You don't want to be caught with it. I mean, it's free, so it's it's not bad. I, I'm actually pretty good at, at the survival stuff. And this is urban survival. You don't have to go in the woods. It's not about skinning rabbits and eating bugs and crap like that. It is like staying where you are and holding out as long as you can. And it's not even specific to zombies or locusts or plague or anything like that. It is just long-term power outage. That's it. Uh, oh, anyway, sorry. Hi, Mark. Can you please send me this? I've been doing lots of research and watching plenty of YouTube videos, and one thing that bugs me, so I watched a video from some astronomer guy who used the ISS app to see when it would be overhead in his area, and he set up his home's telescope and camera, and he got images of some small black shape, which resembles the shape of the ISS in his image. There are a couple of videos showing similar images. My question is, how the heck are they getting the images and photos, if not photoshopped? How does NASA or whoever get something to fly around the sky to mimic the ISS? Please help answer this question, as it could be a real roadblock when thrown back at us trying to prove the flat Earth. <laughs> okay, so you're asking me how the United States military could fake an object in the sky. Insert long pause here. Come on, it's the United States military. You can do just about anything build any sort of aircraft you want. It's not like they have to rely on civilian materials like we do. You literally can build just about anything you want. Is there something flying around up there? Sure. Are there people on it? No. So come on, open your mind a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Here are a couple of images for you to use in your slideshow. Oh, good. It's good. Hope they are okay. I just quickly put them together with Windows Paint, as I don't have Photoshop anymore since having to upgrade to Windows 10. Oh, I'm sorry, man. That's awesome. And uh, yes, I, I will save. save. Well, one of them. The, the other one has profanity in it. I really can't save that one, but that's okay. This one's called Space Station Non-Docking. 
Mark, the speed of ISS docking is traveling 17,000 miles per hour. The docking doors don't seem to have the least amount of padding. When they get closer and closer, mere feet or inches away, and each traveling 300,000 inches per second, 300 inches per second? Inches per second. How can there be no bumps or crashes is beyond me. Well, you know, relative motion. Technically, you know, when you drive, you, you, you be in cars next to each other driving 100 miles an hour, you should be able to hand a sandwich between what, you know, I know the wind would be kind of a pain in the ass, but there's no wind supposedly in the vacuum of space. I don't believe the rocket engine is that accurate. I think it's possible Skylab from the 70s technology docking at traveling at 17,000 miles an hour. Hilarious. And then he says, Klato, Barada, Nikto. Nice. Most people, if you're if you're not very old, you'd think that was from Evil Dead. But if you're pretty old, you'll know it's from uh, the original when the the day the Earth stood still. Anyway, that's from Stephen Ford. Thank you, Stephen, flat Earth member, mail carrier, and genius. He actually wrote that, and that's his little footer. Okay, this one's called Moon Vanishing. Mark, I want to recount a phenomena that happened to me last summer. Actually, it was uh, with my wife and I on a friend's boat. Okay. We were remarking earlier that evening, say an hour and a half before, that the moon was so picturesque and how large it was, about six o'clock in the sky, but raised to the middle placement of a clock in the wall, say 35% if I'm articulating correctly. It was July uh, and particularly bright and large on the horizon when we returned from below deck. I asked her about a boat that was no longer there. Then I asked her, babe, where's the moon? To which she replied, it's gone. This was a clear sky evening in mid-July on Lake Lanier, Georgia. There was a br that's the bridged version. Didn't want to inundate you with too much detail since we've never spoken. But the bottom line, it was if someone had literally turned off the moon. After this, I restarted my motor on the moon landings and NASA, both of which I had problems with. But since a flat earth friend encouraged me to go and look for myself and try to debunk it, I found myself half in the bag. Now, after finishing Eric's 200 proofs, I must have started that a half a dozen times and couldn't get past 30 before my mind would explode. I'm now firmly in the flat earth position. Your videos have been very affable at the same time, challenging, and I'm interested in whether or not you're on board with a deity and do you actively worship them? Uh, yes and yes. I mean, by the time you got to the end of my clues, I think my stance on God and spirituality were pretty clear. It was part of a strict to the scripture non-denominational church for almost a decade of my adult life, 21 through 30. Now I'm 40. I was 44 when I left the church. It was in period of transition as one of the disciples was calling out sins of pride amongst the upper echelon of the leadership worldwide through an email which spread like wildfire through the church. This was around the hotmail.com days when everyone finally had at least an email seemingly circa maybe 2002 yeah that's about right i spent close to a decade performing a mental autopsy of sorts on my spiritual life i had been living previously now a believer in intelligent design it is hard to put god into a place in my life as i wouldn't want to limit him to just the uh, niv scriptures that's new international version by the way that's why I'm curious about where you are in that regard. You might have mentioned this in one of your shows. I've been going back through them at a pretty brisk pace last few weeks. I like the slides and the commentary. It's easy to digest, but very pungent. Pungent? Episode 12 of The Clues was a great presentation uh, and very thought-provoking. Oh, thank you. I don't get a lot of comments on episode 12. Uh, regarding the issues with God, I found myself on days where traffic might put me in an extraordinarily sour mood looking up and giving god a verbal finger <laughs> and or nowadays being irritated that he would be so brazen as to be right above a dome in the sky more seemingly tangible than ever before i think about simulation theory as well much more i mean some of the stuff we see day to day in this world is like something out of the movie even the POTUS, that's president of the United States, by the way. I didn't know that till like a year ago, that the that, that president of the United States is, was actually an acronym. It is definitely as if I've been here before, seen a movie or read an article that painted this current world climate as it might at the height of our, as far as we know, technological achievements. Sorry for the random stream of consciousness. Previous to listening to you, I mostly listen to audio podcasts from iTunes 
as I had a few different podcast shows under the name Jackie T's, Jackie T's on iTunes. I appreciate the way you communicate and I feel better knowing that there is a you doing your thing a little more down to earth and approachable to a controversial topic like FE. It's a brave thing. You've got some guts. I'm hoping that the 100th monkey study comes into play here and that real change can be realized in our lifetime. Local evidence of how backwards our society is. We have the encyclopedia on Royd's iPhone in our pocket, but I have to sit at a stoplight forever three and a half minutes at 2 a.m. because it is on some antiquated magnetic, so they say timer of sorts. When I'm sitting here alone and I know no one is watching, yes, I've run the light. Keep up the good fight. Damien Granoff. Thank you. Cool. All right. So let's see. My nephew's Kyle, my nephew Kyle's eight year odyssey and upcoming 50 state tour by Cessna. Uh, does this have anything to do with flat earth? I don't think so. Looks like it was sent to me in a whole, but 18, 20 people was sent to. Oh, wait, so it's from Dan. A belated happy new year. This is just a select few who've been in the loop. Oh, okay. So I'm not, I, I wasn't, I'm not supposed to read this. Sorry. Personal one. It's hard to d differentiate. Uh, this one's called your coast to coast interview, please. Hey, Mark, Suzanne writing you from South Korea. I just listened to your and Patricia's latest flat earth and other hot potatoes show. And you mentioned your show on coast to coast and that if anyone wanted to listen to it, you could email it to us. That would be great. If you've done two interviews with them, I'd love to listen to them both if you've got them handy. Uh, I'll tell you guys right now. Yeah, I can't put up, I can't upload my coast to coast interviews on YouTube. They're the literally the only, the only people that will absolutely copyright strike you if you, you put up their interviews because they're coming in from, from a pay site. And I didn't, I've never got, I, I got struck by them once, but that was only for putting up a trailer. That's how serious they are. They don't even look at the videos. They just look and they, if it says coast to coast interview in the title, it's like strike. Then you're just like, oh crap. And then you have to take a couple of weeks to, to get it back. And I was like, okay. Anyway, so, but I, I, I have the raw audio files, so I can send it to you. All you have to do is email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net and I, and say, Hey, I want your coast to coast stuff. And I, I've got them on my desktop and I'll just shoot them off to you. It's just the raw audio. Uh, also, I want to share my first attempt at a Flat Earth video to join the over 16 million on YouTube now. I first put it with no background music, and that video was almost 70 views at the moment, but then I decided to add background music and a few more slides at the end, as the ending was too abrupt. I found in the original, and found in the original video. So here it is, in case you have 10 minutes to spare and care to have a look. Thanks for all you do. I've been unabashed Flat Earther since April of 2015, and I finally decided uh, it's time to do something. Knowledge is no good if kept to oneself. Keep up the good work. Peace and blessings always. Suzanne B. in South Korea. Thank you, Suzanne. This one's called YouTube Flat Earth Truth. Okay. Dear Mark, thank you. There's this whole, there's enough, quite a few people crop, copy to this, but let's figure it out anyway. Dear Mark, thank you for your research on our world cover up. I also have been looking very closely at the powers that hold us by the strings for years. I agree with your presentation 100% to add a few items. Our stable earth, they're spinning rubbish, gravity, never proven. Cloud formation movements, not con consistent to a spinning Earth, no visible, consistent, clear shots of Earth from space, and there's so-called thousands of satellites that should be recording our blue planet. My observations of a flat terrain from a helicopter in Australia over a 25-kilometer area enforced my concept of a flat horizon. Finally, deception of the powers, money mongers in this world lead to one of your points. The golden rule is their power base. Enabling them to a world of deception from NASA to 9-11 to their rubbish space programs. Mark, my name is Bob and I'm a 65-year-old self-employed service carpenter, welder, repair tech. I've worked in many industries in my working life. I live in Melbourne, Australia. I have three grown daughters, two grandchildren, was married for 33 years, currently divorced. Wife took off with my ex-mate. <laughs> Karma claimed him. He died of cancer after being with her for 18 months. I have a new loving, giving partner for nine years. My main belief is loving and giving. If we can master those two special life ingredients, our world would be a better place. Please note, the world won't master this, not in our lifetime, mate. Eh, I disagree. 
You are totally correct with your approach. Don't mention the flat earth concept. People, family members cannot handle it. The truth, they are all brainwashed. Uh, where do we go from here? My thoughts are carefully make people think about what's out there. Put doubts in their mind. Be careful. They think we are crazy. If Would great if that... Wow, good English. As Neil Armstrong described, man removed the hidden shadow of truth's mysteries in this case man-made. Once again, the moon rubbish, some astronauts murdered, some, some forced into a life deception, not something we could entertain. The test will come, Mark. Only to be judged by our maker. You are correct. The concept is to hide God with their deception. I hope you find time to reply to my email. I think it would be great to share some ideals. Best regards, Bob Pert, Melbourne. Cool, and I will respond to him. Uh, let's see, this one's called Update on Mad Mike's Rocket. And there's nothing new here. The Flat Earth Network YouTube channel was taken down. It was targeted for removal by the same individuals hacking Mad Mike's website and harassing him. Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're working on that. Let's get rid of that one. Sorry. Again, I barely even skim these things when I first go through them. I just kind of skim for spam emails more than anything, and I don't even catch those all I... But I'm going to keep trying. I know there's too many emails to come in, and I'm never going to be able to get them all, and it's going to get worse and worse, but I'm going to keep fighting the fight. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth. Mark, I didn't mean to sound disrespectful in any way. Oh, good, a troll email. I love a good conspiracy. The problem I have with Flat Earth is this. Think about the worldwide space programs. Just uh, take the Russians, for instance. All the ships, probes, cosmonauts, and all they have done. Trillions spent, many thousands of people involved. All the tragedies and accidents with the efforts to keep most of it secret. This is done only to keep Flat Earth secret. Yeah, it is. It is. But you just don't have to tell everybody. That's the difference. Yeah, this is such a huge secret that, yeah, thousands of people would be involved. The best part is you don't have to tell them why. Just create a fake space program. The Chinese also. Right now they are working on a future moon mission. Uh-huh. They're not sharing much of this with us because they want the benefits for themselves. Mm -hmm. The Chinese leaders don't need to do this to keep their people in the dark about flat earth. Y yes, they do. They're communist and already have the people controlled. Mm, this kind of overrides that. I don't care what government program you're using. Flat earth, it supersedes all of this. Same with the U.S. All the stuff NASA has done for 70 years just to fool us about flat earth. Yep. He's just asking questions. He's just naming countries china russia united states all the space shuttle launches just fakes so that we don't have to find out the dome we live in there yep the earth i agree isn't as we may think it is indeed but flat earth under some kind of dome is absurd <laughs> why you just just gave me all my arguments like look of course you would keep this secret if you have an explanation to get around this flat earth stump what stumbling block it's the biggest secret ever you don't tell people you create you fake space that's the only thing you have to do. You have to spend a lot of money, get a bunch of people involved. You don't have to tell them, but the big thing is you have to spend a lot of money. Fake space. That's it. It is not a stumbling block. I don't know. He can't get his head around it. That's fine. Please share with me if the earth is truly flat. I would like to know. Yes, it is, Charles. That's from Charles Holloway. I, I explained it in the clues as best I could, and that is you're, you cannot be the ultimate power unless you are the ultimate power, meaning... Uh, the Air Force knows full well there are things flying around in the sky. But the thing is, is that they are way better than our fighter planes. And that is you can't rule the sky unless you rule the sky. So if there's something up there faster, you just don't acknowledge it. You just go into the nuts. Nope, not, nothing to see here. Nothing. Here. Oh, it's probably ours. We probably reverse engineered from Area 51. Even though there's accounts of these things going around centuries before there was even uh, not just airplanes before there was even a united states at all again if you guys are kind of late to the game look up this is not secret information look up the 1561 nuremberg event and tell me what you see up in the sky that's the same principle here which is you can't be the ultimate power if we are in a domed structure everyone is going the the immediate effect would be lack of authority strength lack of a better term which is you, the government would lose, not necessarily credibility, but they would lose some power. Because if there's somebody bigger than them, 
people are going to be looking at them. It's like, we don't care about what you say. We want to know what the dome makers say. That, that seems a little extreme, but, but there'd be people that would say that, including a lot of religious organizations. So anyway, let's move on. This one's called Survival Guide, please. Thank you, Sir Rob. Yes, if anyone wants a survival guide, just email me, say survival guide. I'm saying a lot of those things out lately. This one's called Coast to Coast. Mark, send me your Coast to Coast files. Keep it flat, Tom. Yep, if you want my Coast to Coast things, just send me an email, say Coast to Coast. I'll send you the, uh, the interviews because you're not going to be able to find them on YouTube. I guarantee that. Uh, another survival guide. Hey, Mark, huge fan. Send me a couple of survival guide. Yep, thank you, Corey. I should probably, I'm reading these just because I acknowledge the people that send them to me. So that's from Corey Reed. And and I generally, if the, you put it in the title, uh, yes, the, the emails are responded to in the order they are received. However, if I see Survival Guide in the title, I'll shoot it off right away. Uh, as long as I can. As long as, you know, eventually one day, maybe I'll have an assistant that'll do that. This one's another Survival Guide. Oh, it's an email that goes with it. Uh, let's see. Harmark. I'm um, discussing Flat Earth with a Facebook friend who claims that the Flat Earth is impossible because he is an experienced navigator and has used spherical trigonometry that concludes that the Earth is a globe. Could you please help me understand his perspective? Here is what he wrote. I challenge any, per which is interesting because uh, even before I read this, because I, w I have a Navy navigator that's coming on the show on Strange World uh, Tuesday night. And last week I had the... Um, uh, Army Air Force, uh, I'm sorry, Army Air Traffic Controller. And so I'll have a Navy Navigator this Tuesday. Uh, anyway, this guy says, I challenge any proponent of flatter theory to actually learn, there we go, learn celestial navigation, which, which mariners have been using to accurately determine their position on Earth far out at sea, away from any landmark for hundreds of years. Learn it well enough that you can, I'm not making fun, actually I am making fun, that you can actually pre-calculate the approximate position of some stars. Then go on deck with an accurate clock and sight those stars with a sextant. Then do the math needed to fix your position. Compare that position with electronic navigation aids to check your work. With clear skies and a good horizon at twilight, a good navigator will get a pretty good fix on his position on the planet. I have done so myself many, many times. The only way the math required for accurate celestial navigation positions work out of the way we calculate is become is because the Earth is spherical. This is because the math is based on spherical trigonometry. If the Earth was flat, like some of you apparently believe, celestial navigation would be based on plane trigonometry instead of spherical trigonometry. And if that were the case, it would be explaining to you that the Earth must be flat, but it's not. It's a sphere. That's not my opinion. That truly is objective fact. Math does not lie. There is the line. Math does not lie. Science cannot be wrong, no matter what. Ever. They, 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 even when they're wrong, they don't admit to being wrong, which is why I list all those wonderful times that they took the bribes and, and uh, released products that they never should have ahead of time. You know, like lead paint and lead gasoline and DDT and asbestos. And, oh, I don't know, how about all the scientists that took the bribes for the cigarettes and said that, th even now, even though, yeah, they lost all the lawsuits. They're not in, in um, television and radio ads anymore. But we still sell cigarettes. And, of course, my favorite of all time, uh, well, my second favorite of all time. I won't tell you my first. The, my all-time favorite I'm actually saving for Neil deGrasse Tyson in person. But my second favorite of all time is the um, uh, Kelvin, Lord William Kelvin, who was the father of thermodynamics. Absolute temperatures are measured in Kelvin. And he mentioned in an address to, I think, you know, one of one, I can't remember which science society it was. He said that balloons are the only thing that are going to lift people up into the sky. Airplanes are impossible. He has no faith in the aeronautical society at all. And he said this literally as they were designing planes. And three years later, we had him in the air. And it just kills me. It's like, here is Lord Kelvin. And people use his name every single day. We name absolute temperatures after him. And he is known for the guy that said that airplanes are impossible. Never going to happen. Yeah, science is always right. Whatever. In fact, in fact, I found out even a new one just recently, which was Scientific American magazine. You know, one of their Bibles. In 1910, after airplanes were already in the, the early stages. They were saying, nope, there's no future in airplanes. Nope, they're so fraught with problems. They're never going to be viable for anything. <laughs> that's scientific. That's a consensus from Scientific American. They just, science just hates the new stuff. They hate it. 
I hate it so much. They they never make leaps. Well, I shouldn't say that. They do make leaps of faith every once in a while, but only if it suits them. If it goes against them, no, they, they drag their, never seen a group drag their feet as much as they do. And they're, they're going to do this with Flat Earth all the way up to the end. Anyway, uh, so, sorry, sorry, as far as this guy saying that math is always right, uh, in the trigonometry, no, it, not the case. Not if the dome structure is trying to simulate a sphere. And I said that in the clues, day one. We are in a place that was designed to be an illusion, to simulate a sphere. And that's what, how it was interpreted. And it worked brilliantly. If the illusion works, you go with the illusion. It can be done. Absolutely positively, it can be done. We can do this now on a limited scale. We could build a giant planetarium with multiple projection systems and have sort of like an equator line where the stars are spinning clockwise one way and counterclockwise the other way. Absolutely, we can do this. Can we do it on a massive scale, a, a, a giant scale, thousands of miles wide? No, we just don't have the resources for it. And it seems large to us, but what if there were beings that it wasn't large to? Anyway, uh, moving on. This one's called... This one's called... <laughs> NASA's Parker Solar Probe Will Touch the Sun from the Washington Post. Mark, I wrote a while back about sending a probe satellite to the sun to prove it is moving, not the Earth. Maybe this mission will accomplish this goal. Although NASA lies about all its missions and findings, so what would make this one any different? And yeah, Washington Post says uh, this NASA spacecraft will get closer to the sun than anything ever before. Uh huh. If it comes from NASA, if NASA releases it, just just throw it away. I mean, acknowledge it that they're actually releasing the story, but it is a f just a lie. NASA doesn't ever tell the truth about anything ever. It is literally just space propaganda. We're sending a probe to the sun. We have a probe that went over the top of Saturn and Jupiter, and we're reclassifying classifying Pluto. The only reason these stories are there are to reinforce one thing, one thing only, and that is you're on a globe. They don't even care if you read the article. As long as you see the headline, it's like, oh, something on Jupiter because we're on a globe. Uh, face on Mars because you're on a globe. Over and over and over again. And it works. It has been working till now. This one's called High Mark. Hello, my friend. Please don't read this content out on any of your videos. Great. All right. Uh, gyros, blah, blah, blah. Well, not much. If I can't read it, I am not permitted to access social media on board. Oh. Well, I think he's military. All right. I won't read it here, but I will respond to him. In fact, I'm responding to a... Uh, uh, another guy recently and uh, anyway sorry but it seems like a little out of it I'm, I'm sorry I'm just scanning it there's a lot of things going on uh, I'm trying to get ready for the show on Tuesday and there's a uh, another guy from I think NASA I hope he writes back a guy from NASA finally reached out to me and uh, he's he's retired but I, I he might be something so hopefully I'm, I'm waiting for his email this one's called cell phone gps hello mark my name is colton i recently started watching your videos and have found them very interesting so in an attempt to help further your cause i came up with a hypothesis what if you use your cell gps to monitor your location while riding one of the flights that disappear off radar both yourself and others like with sprint family locator can track your location does it turn off like with planes at some point i would assume so if so that's just one more reasonable argument for truth right just thought it was an interesting point of view and would love to hear your opinion if possible best regards colton sawyer so does it both of your sprint family tracker does it turn off like with planes yeah yeah it would have to yeah yeah i would think so too although yeah, it would it would turn off. This one's called 850 people watching Waterworld uh, from Uber. Oh, from Uber Flat Earth. Hey, Mark, glad you were able to regroup. Here's some screenshots I took of the ISS live feed channel. 850 people watching Waterworld with Kevin Costner. Thought you would enjoy some globe stupidity. Enjoy, Josh. Thank you, Josh. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, amigo. I hope you are doing nice and good. I am writing you because of the flat earth. I think, sorry, I'm just 
going to sound like I have a big ego, but I do not know how to say it. You are right and wrong. Why? Of course, we live in a flat dish, but it is the entire universe that is flat, not only the Earth. We live in an infinite flat universe. What you and me have been told at the school of the universe, it is the same down here, but flat. We can travel through stargates and here there are other dimensions living the exact moment and we are all connected through the now and all and only you can see the other dimensions through your awareness expansion every time your awareness is expanded you're going to be able to see other dimensions and live live forms life life forms i think you meant aliens technology religion education sports politics school work money race etc they are all distractions they just don't want us to see inside ourselves to find and realize about our spirituality and beautiful awareness together we are extremely powerful take care of my friends and i like your channel amador martinez cool this one's called force the line funding hi mark i'm alex i'm a songwriter in new york city and i play music for a living i also earned a bachelor's degree in biology earlier in my life long story short i'm a recent convert to this madness i never lost touch with the scientific method and it was this very thing that has me sh has me shaken when looking at your clues so i've been on the regular observed cycle of recent red pilled people who research relentlessly for their first two weeks on the other side i can't see any end to it so i'm curious shouldn't we be crowdsourcing brian mullins force the line experiment like yesterday all the best and keep up the good work alex lowry um yeah alex you you probably don't know that brian mullen is currently uh has to step back for professional reasons away from the flat earth hopefully you you will look you have done some more research since then i know that email is a little while ago but yeah this is called flat earth society seemingly has no flat earthers Hello, most excellent peoples. I know you are all so busy. He sent this to Bob and um, Jaron and a couple other people. And I totally understand if you don't have the time to help with a post or two, but this website seems to contain no flat earthers. I really don't have enough arguments to present my case. I figure you guys are so effective at getting all your points across. Maybe y'all could sway some people's opinions on the subject. I don't feel like anyone has given me a good answer, but I don't really understand the points they brought about. I really need all the help I can get. I know this is a pretty absurd request. I am so thankful for all the hard work you have presented, and I have learned an unbelievable amount through your video presentations. Maybe the points I brought up are incorrect. I'm just not sure. Once again, I'm so thankful for all you do and appreciate all you do so much. I pray for your success. And when I get out of debt, I plan on donating money to all your causes. I don't really have a cause to donate to. Uh, I hope many blessings are bestowed upon you and may joy and love fill your lives. Sincerely, helplessly hoping, and there's no name. P.S. Here's the link. And it's, yeah, the Flatter Society has problems. We, do, we don't need the Flatter Society. That's the big thing. We uh, Social media has kind of allowed us to go past them. We can do just about anything we want, and you don't need a dedicated website even, really, anymore. We've we've done all this with just YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and Instagram. I'm not on most of those. All right, this one's called Something Weird About Our News. Mark, I am retired, and the wife and I watch the news a lot for the last 10 days in the news. They've been showing a burning house and people throwing out a baby, and the fire women catch the baby's baby runs and falls and then a five second clip of her and then some baby tossing clip but now it's a big male fireman i seem to see things a lot in my own life that leave me scratching my head something is not right in the world as bob dylan said you don't need a weatherman to tell which way the wind blows that's from steve i don't know steve i have never seen that and that was a while ago so if anybody knows what what the baby being thrown out of the burning building and rescued someone let me know uh this one we are you guys this is kind of a review one google's 20 million dollar x prize moonshot is about to crash back to earth without a winner and yep and there's the the story there and that if you guys don't know the 20 million dollar x prize has been canceled permanently because none of the countries were ready to go even though they gave them years to do it uh, they were supposed to launch in december 31st of 2017 
Then they kicked down the they kicked the can to April of this year, and literally in the first month, it was like, nope, that's it, we're calling it quits. And they they couldn't. There's no way you can fake it. I've, I've said this for a while, which is the the detection technology has gotten so good, you cannot fake space anymore. You can't. And I know that Elon Musk tried and just did a horrible job at it. Uh, there's too many things that were missing, and he did that, and that was just with a car and a mannequin. Can you imagine him trying to fake people going around the moon and back with a crew of, what, five, six people? Yeah, good luck with that. You could not pay me enough money to pull off that 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 thing. It's just, it's, I, the logistics would be a nightmare. I don't care how many people I had. I don't care how much money. Uh, this was called Thank You So For This. Mark, I've known for some time the earth is flat. My name is Dean, and I have not time now, but would like to see more. Thank you again so much. That's from Dean Clarkson. Thank you, Dean. This one's called, Did My Own Curvature Experiment. Just completed my own measure of the earth's curve. I found a target from 12 feet high. The target was the Bell County Expo Center in Belton, Texas. I live off West Adams and Highway 35 in Temple. From that intersection, it's 9.3 road miles on Highway 35. I estimated the straight line between the uh, straight line distance using curved road estimation transpose to straight line distance. Something we learned in the Army for map reading and route reconnaissance and route classification. I came up with 8.5 miles straight line distance from my position to the expo center. From my 12-foot high position at the Adams and Highway 35 intersection, I had a clear view of the Expo Center Gold Dome roof. As you can see, the horizon should have been at about 4.25 miles and the Expo Center behind a 12-foot wall of curve. Next time, I will use a live feed and stream my results. No curve observed on this experiment. As per the globe head science, we're not supposed to see beyond the horizon of the theoretical curve. Well, it's not there. No curve. Thank you. And that's from Joseph Moreno, one of my regular emailers. Do we have time for a few more? Yes, we do. Let's do regarding a couple questions. Any thoughts on this stuff? I noticed you've been busy with nonstop interviews, heard you on Coast to Coast, and got to say a good score. Millions of people listen to that show. I've emailed Jimmy Church over at Fade to Black a couple times to get you on the air. Anyway, I'm emailing about you mentioning on Coast to Coast that there's a... Sorry. Uh, no photos of the, of the outer wall dome. I've been doing a boatload of research in many areas of flat. I found that there's, in fact, a photo of the outer wall, unless they are fake. Ah, yeah, taken in 1926 by biologist Joy or George Rayner while aboard the William Scoresby. I don't know if that's real. I don't. Because I would suspect that the dome is thousands of miles inland. Because remember, Admiral Byrd was looking for it with aircraft ever, ever better aircraft from 1928 up until his death in 1957 he was flying planes and you know with refueling stations and he didn't find it so up until really up until operation deep freeze so i think it's thousands of miles inland so if you have a photo of it that's yeah no don't think so oh yeah and by the way the jimmy church thing i've been on jimmy church i've been on his show and not when he's been doing the guest host on coast to coast uh, but yeah, we, we did a thing and he was the guy that told me he was so nervous about doing the show because he was afraid that his audience would just come down on him like a ton of bricks. Uh, let's see here. This one's called info from Cariana with pick. Hi, Mark. Thank you for taking my phone call. I will start sending you my notes and info. Make sure you look uh, for attachments of picks. Here's a pick and it goes into some occult knowledge stuff. I won't really read that. Let's go to thanks for your work. Dear Mark, just want you to know what an effect your work has had on mine. I was working on a paper that I intended to mention the flat earth theory. I started out making it clear to my Christian brethren that I neither embraced nor rejected any of the theories in the paper. I'm merely aware of them and be they true or not, they pose no scientific or historical threat to our faith and facts supported. Along the way, I had to revisit your work for clarity. I ended up shifting gears and wrapped the ending up with Flat Earth. Depending on your reading load, you might enjoy knowing the contents of the paper and appreciate my ending. Depending on my health, I suspect I might begin defending Flat Earth at my blog. Oh no, I'm going to be in trouble. Oh well. 
<laughs> as they say in good old fashioned unchristian American street English, scrum. She didn't say scrum. Thank you for all your work and your enduring the persecution you undoubtedly underwent and surely more to come. In truth, Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. Let's see if we can end on a fun one. This one's called Starter Video on How It Wall Works. Hi, Mark. Would you have a video that is good for people? Yeah, let's end it on this one. Who still think you would fall off the edge, like one that shows how the sun and the moon move, how and why it looks like if the sun is rising and setting, one that shows seasons and star patterns, etc. Thanks. Literally signed me. And yeah, let's end it on this one. So what I usually recommend for anyone, if you're trying to convince a new group of people or persuade a new group of people or just introduce the topic to new people, the uh, playlist is called Flat Earth Shortlist for New People. Just go on YouTube, type in Flat Earth Shortlist for New People, and it is a list of about 25 videos that are done. In fact, I don't know. If, I don't think I even have one on there. It starts out with Marty Leeds, but you can pick and choose. The, the, the videos range from five minutes to two hours. <clears throat> and they're for anybody that, that wants to get into it. So you can kind of pick and it's kind of a shotgun pattern approach, kind of like the clues were, and just let them kind of poke through it. And they're, they're really, they're really easy to digest. Simple concepts, uh, very, uh, I consider most of them well edited, pretty smooth. And that's what I recommend to anybody that's, that's, that's out there. So that's it. That's all we're doing for today. If you guys want to email me stuff, great, fantastic. Email me to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. If you want to send me anything in the mail physically, I have included my mailing address in the description box of every single, and there's got to be a thousand of them now, videos that I've ever made. I've done a mass update and, and updated the description for everything. So everything's pretty much the same. And that's it. Until next time, guys. Stay flat.